guy going to possibly punch you or do you have to run like what do you mm-hmm. i don't want to walk around faking it till i make it welcome to the no streetlights podcast i'm aaron and i'm tim we'll be engaging in conversations every friday to shine a light on what we've been through how it changed us and what we learned we want to encourage societal growth towards kindness through understanding these conversations and the associated language can be triggering. Listen at your own discretion. But please reach out if we need to be doing something better. So let's take a breath, relax, and be welcome. Oh man, just gonna start the episode out with an um for you. I appreciate that. I've yeah, I've been chewing through those in the editing bay here recently. <laughs> I got a million of them just waiting for you. Well, I did wake you up for this. Uh... <laughs> that is true. Yeah, I was definitely knocked out approximately 30 minutes ago. Um, God. But wonderful news. By the time this episode comes out, we've already surpassed it. But to us, it's brand new and fresh. We just released our 52nd episode. It's been a whole year of No Streetlights podcast. And so today, we have for you a thrilling guest, Latif, known for his Saber Art brand, a self-taught visual artist who creates incredibly unique pieces. But Latif isn't just about the canvas. He's also a skilled, candid photographer and a veteran of the Navy. He's bringing with him a wealth of experience and a whole lot of wanderlust, being a dedicated sun chaser who chases the light and inspiration wherever it leads. Please help us in welcoming Saber Tooth Lynx. Hey, good morning, good afternoon. I don't know where you guys are. Or, hello, I'll, that's the best way to put it. Hello, whenever and wherever you're listening. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Latif. It's very okay, nice. Thanks, to, guys. Very nice to have you on here. Before we dived into starting the episode out, we had a lovely conversation about food and fast food fast food <laughs> specifically yeah yeah I, I find that your fast food choices can really help you determine if you're a good person or not and i have a feeling you're a very good person i think we have the same <laughs> mindset about what fast foods we like so i think that's all that really matters thanks i appreciate it yeah um i try not to eat too much fast food because it's obviously not good for you um almost wherever we are, even like with you being in Italy and we are saying that McDonald's over there tastes better. And I'm pretty sure it comes from better sources, at least in America, knowing that fast food has been used to just feed all of us on like a quicker and higher scale. And yeah, the food just isn't that, it's not that great. So yeah, you have to be a little bit more picky as to where you're eating. Yeah, definitely. Especially (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to the food portion of No Streetlights podcast, but great, I, it, it definitely matters like where the ingredients are sourced from, and if it's like frozen crap versus like freshly sourced, locally organic, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, no. As much as I do love food, and I feel like we could actually have a very fun, interesting conversation about fast food and stuff of that nature, Latif, I'm very interested in your art. Uh, okay. Aaron sent me a couple photos earlier yeah. that I had the opportunity to look through, and they're, I mean, your style is incredibly unique. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, the There's one that, like, stood out to me. It was very striking. Okay. Uh, it looks like there's a, it's a woman in the middle with, like, uh, feathers, and then, like, the bottom portion is, like, digitals, digital pixels and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so, oh, okay. Um, well, a quick explanation about that one. Last year, I took that on, I think, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. So, um, before then, it had just been a minute since I really traveled. And I have an old military friend from, like, boot camp who lives in Manhattan. And my military friends are always trying to tell me, like, yeah, Yo, you should come out and come visit for a minute. And so I was finally like, yeah, I do need to go do that. So I took a week. I went to New York and I was really just out taking pictures, just trying to kind of get back into photography. 
Um, and I'll, I'll explain why I, was, why I say get back into it later. But I had, I was just out taking pictures and it felt so much fun again because I hadn't had fun taking pictures in a while. So at least back to this picture that you're talking about. I took the picture of the woman and the what looks like feathers is actually like a palm tree that I took when I was out in California during COVID. Hmm. So the idea of the whole picture is to be able to see like the city background, but you're kind of seeing it through like the tree. And my the point I was trying to get across is that a lot of times we want to be closer to like the beach, right? Or like we want to be closer to nature or more outside, but we're always in these, in these sky rises or in these cities that span like miles and miles. So it was just the idea of like being in, being somewhere where there's all these, again, like buildings and technology and cars and everything that goes into a city Sometimes we really are just wanting the simplicity of nature. That might just be a beach. It might be the forest. It might be a park, you know? Um, so that's what that really means. I love that's awesome. that almost every image and piece of art that I've seen you create is incredibly striking and dualistic. Mm -hmm. There's always so many different meanings. You have people so you have that human element and right. then you have nature or chaos and then an incredibly striking digital presence in the image yeah which i mean that that's always been incredible to me thank you yeah i am when it comes to like digital stuff especially with i might have to see some of the other pictures i sent but especially with some of the digital things I, oh man, I should have sent that over. So I'm pretty much working on like a set of couple of pictures. And the basis around that is called like digital outdoors. Cause I'm thinking like, yo, what's it going to be like in the next 50 years or so when we're more integrated into technology, but we don't know like what outside is going to look like, like, <clears throat> If we continue to expand like our cities, how many parks and like how many trees are we going to have and things like that. So the idea behind what I was making was we're almost going to be like, I mean, I don't want to be, you know, morbid or dystopian, but it's almost kind of something out of like Ready Player One or almost like Wally, -E, to where we're just like, we just have VR glasses on and but in this VR, we're outside in like the forest or something, right? And you're like, oh man, this is great. Look at all these trees, they stretch so high. And you think that you're getting this natural dopamine of being outside, but at the same time, what if the internet crashes? And like, let's say the, the trees start to glitch or like you see a bird pass by and then like you see the same bird pass by three times because the internet's messing up. So it's like, where are we going with all this technology and all this, all this innovation? If, if we're almost not going to have anything worth taking, taking like the rose tinted glasses off for. Damn. Yeah. That's a really striking, like, position and i guess what am i specifically looking for here would be i guess your take on on where you think the future is going to be like and yeah. it's interesting because i was actually just having this same thought yesterday because i was texting my wife and i was thinking i was like you know it's crazy but when i was like 10 or 11 i never thought texting would be a thing yeah, I, I I considered like peak technology was like the big laptops that you would get with like the small ass screens and like the fat batteries. I was like, that's peak. That's peak right there. <laughs> and now I think look peak at peak technology was PlayStation Two. You know, as soon as I said peak technology and I mentioned the laptop, <laughs> I thought I was like PlayStation Two. Man, we're on the same we're on the same wavelength today. I love that. 
Yeah, peak technology was PlayStation 2. <laughs> Dude, when they came out with the slim PlayStation 2s, I was like, man, we're never getting anything better than that. We never, <laughs> we, we kind of didn't need and we PlayStation haven't. 3. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> so but I do want to touch on that uh, outdoor preservationism because I'm a huge nerd. Right. I don't play Warhammer 40k because I'm broke. Okay. <laughs> Magic that's already gets hobby. all my money, and that's, yeah. you know, they're starting to lose that. But yeah. <laughs> I do think that we societally kind of need to reverse course and go back to actually touching grass and climbing trees. Mm-hmm. So Warhammer 40k does kind of show us if we keep on the same track we're on, there's not going to be earth left. You know, we're yeah. going to burn up the oceans. We're going to cut down the trees. It's just going to be all concrete and hate. Bro, right. like one thing that I've definitely picked up more that helps me get outside is over the last couple of years is biking. Like, so I had a coworker who's a really great friend of mine still. He was telling me how he was into like jogging and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I don't like to jog because running sucks. I don't like that shit. Um, but I definitely want to get outside. I definitely want to be active. I want to do something. So I got a bike and I've been working on that over the last couple of years. I'm not looking to get into like competitions. It's just something I'd like to do. Right. Or it's just something that, <clears throat> especially if something goes wrong, it usually isn't too expensive to fix. And it's nice to be able to, for the most part, be able to fix it on my own. But I brought all that more. up. Yeah, you get to see so much more of the city and so much more of like where you live. But I brought that up to say, like, especially yesterday, I went out for like a long bike ride because I had like a long last couple of weeks. And every now and then, maybe like every hour or so, I'll just pull up to a park. I'll just like take my shoes off. I'll probably like take my headphones off and just walk around and just hang out in the grass for a minute. Right. Like, because that kind of stuff is important. Like it's, yeah, it's a saying, but yeah, we should get out and touch grass. Like you should get out and I don't know, go play in the stream for like 10 minutes or something or dance in the rain. Like as much, as much like opportunity as there is to, monetize our hobbies especially with them being outside and like we can put it on instagram or twitter or whatever and be like hey y'all like i really got into hiking this is my trail mix like i made this from mangoes and like dried apples or whatever this is my dog make sure you follow my page like all that and my cool. dog's page <laughs> right yeah make sure you follow my dog's page it's like all that is cool but how much of that are you doing for yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I just grabbed my dog. We just went on a hike. We're out sitting out here by this cool little waterfall, eating some trail mix. I could put this on like my story or something, but I think I'm just going to sit here and enjoy it. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened when I went to New York last year. Like, I didn't really tell anyone that I went to New York, not to be like I'm secluded or I don't want to talk to anyone or, or I just want to be like a, like a hermit, but it was more so like, hey, this is for me. Like mm-hmm. this trip is for like my relaxation, my time away, things like that. Like I took almost 1200 photos while I was up there. So there's all kinds of like documentation for it. But <clears throat> when it comes to being in the moment, it felt so nice to be out of Georgia or being somewhere different because I want it to be in the moment, right? So I think it's important for us to to not chase like, I won't even say validation, but to what feels like we kind of have to do because we're so attached to technology nowadays. I do have something interesting to contribute to this as well because we actually just had a conversation with a... Um, a stand-up comedian. His name is Stia. Mm-hmm. Uh, his episode was four one. Your episode okay. is four three. But he mentioned that 
one one issue he's running into, especially since he's trying to get into the content creation, is one issue he's been running into because he's been getting into content creation and trying to expand his brand mm -hmm. is he he enjoys going out going out and hiking, but he has started implementing recording him out hiking, and it's just now he's no longer doing it for himself. He's doing it to fuel content creation. Mm -hmm. And it's such a weird fine line that we have to walk. Cause like, it's interesting because I agree with you, right? Like we, we got to do stuff that gets us outside more, but we're providing that message through an audio platform that involves people utilizing technology to listen to it. It's For such sure. a weird dichotomy, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, like go outside, touch grass, go, you know, go walk in the park and go play in the stream and things of that nature, stuff that we used to do, especially when we were kids and whatnot. But you know, it's so hard to disconnect from technology. And I think I have more of a, a, a middle of the road stance on this, too, because I am concerned clearly that we are uh, burning through our nature's resources at a, at a very quick expanse. And we're expanding our cities and taking down trees and forests and stuff. Human specifically, yeah. we're a very adaptive creature. I, I do think that as the problems arise, we're going to find solutions to at least continue the human race. But, you know, like and other animals that exist out there, deer, birds, squirrels, hell, any kind of creature you can think of that we're slowly pushing towards extinction because of our expansion. Like, is the human race, like, should we be continuing versus killing off, like, hundreds of thousands of other species of creatures? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's such a... I, it, I mean... I guess this is a situation where I guess I could have my cake and eat it too, but it's like, let's, yeah. let's just save everything. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I don't... No, that's a very good point. Um, before, yeah. before we dive any deeper into okay. this topic and start talking about artwork here, uh, Latif, let me go ahead and quickly let the less listeners know that if you're listening to us on Apple and Spotify, uh, we also have a YouTube channel. If you want to go watch a video and see the phenomenal shirt that I'm wearing in this video or in this episode, if you have no idea what it is, it is currently the No Street Lights Be Your Own Light t-shirt. I have it. It's wonderful tie-dye, very comfortable. Love it. Absolutely. And it has our little logo on it too. But yeah, so go check us out on YouTube. If you feel so inclined and you enjoy watching the videos and whatnot, feel free to subscribe, like, share, comment. If you leave some comments, it'd help us wonderfully and Provide some feedback about things that you want to see us talk about or touch on in the future episodes. If you're watching us on YouTube and don't know that we have audio platforms, Spotify, Apple, and various other locations, consider checking us out there. It helps us a lot as well. So always feel free to reach out. Let us know what you think. And I guess back to the show. Speaking of which, I do like that shirt. Um, I didn't know it was like a... Oh, I obviously saw the logo, but when mm -hmm. it was like a be your own light shirt, I saw it like it looks like the sun is just kind of coming over your left side there. So yeah. I'm like, that's a really cool concept. I like that. Yeah, our wonderful friends through Trinidad, uh, they have a phenomenal ability with their tie dye, and they're luckily working with us and helping us get T-shirts made. And anybody who's interested in purchasing one, they're very much welcome to do so. Uh, they're doing them through Etsy at this time, but yeah. It's an awesome, awesome shirt. I love it. Super comfortable. I like to wear nice. it for all of our recordings to remind everybody that, you know, hey, we got t-shirts, guys. <laughs> all right. So where did and you guys get the No Street Lights name from? Ooh. We've uh, done this a few times. Okay. Uh, it was an old inside joke, but the meaning that Tim and I have found in it is to be a little succinct. It's dark out there. There, there is no external light that's going to be given to you. You're mm -hmm. the one who has to shine and grow mm -hmm. and find your course. Okay. So since we're talking about names, mm -hmm. how in the hell is SVBR Saber and what does that mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny. I was thinking about this this morning and I was like, man, I've been kind of waiting to unpack this whole thing but I'll try and like keep it in a nutshell. So the, the name Saber itself is an acronym. Um, it means self, I'm kind of working on it a little bit, but it means self, virtue, balance, and results. Starting at the top with being self, 
we just have to, I especially noticed in my life, I have to start putting myself first, not selfish, not necessarily self in a self-centered way, but just being a little more selfish. Um, Cause all of us honestly benefit from us being a little bit more selfish. You know, like if you went out and figured out how to make an extra $3,000 a week, then it might seem selfish to like some of your peers or like your wife or girlfriend may not really necessarily be happy about it. But now that you've got an extra $10,000 for you can be a little bit more selfless and like do things for not only you, but do things for her or like other people. So yeah, it's really just finding that, that good spot between being selfish and selfless like help but don't help to the point where like now you're the one who needs help Mm -hmm. um virtue more so just being a person that you're proud of being you know do the right thing make sure that you're on top of the things that you need to stay on top of and being honest to people about certain things if not just everything, you know, trying to be honest and just a virtuous person, being brave, things like that. Balance more so comes to like the spirituality as <clears throat> excuse me, the spirituality aspect. Uh, during COVID, I got into Taoism and how that had really just plays into like a big a big part of balance. You know, one thing that I definitely prioritize is like rest. You know, like if I'm working on a piece of art, I could be working on it for like two hours straight and it's nowhere close to being done, but I don't want to sit here and like try and force it to happen. You know, like sometimes it's like, hey, I hit this point. Let me close my iPad. I might watch something. I might watch like some baseball highlights or something. Then I'll go to sleep. But it's also knowing like, hey, when you have some of this off time, you need to focus on creating this art same with it's it sounds kind of the same with like life a little bit like i kind of don't like the phrase uh positive vibes only because i'm just like "Mm, that's a good that's a good thing to say but if the sun's out all the time then you're going to be in a drought you know and if it's raining constantly then it's going to be a flood so life really happens in like hey it's raining this day but then it's sunny for like a week you know so that's for how balance goes. And then results is really just the accumulation of those three. Like, did you, were you selfish enough to be like, Hey, I need to work on this. Did you keep your virtue and like not lie to anybody or not really make up anything or step out of your, like, I guess like your code of honor to be like, Hey, I need to work on this. Like I'd love to help, but I I can't do that. Did you take the balance to like, to know when to step away or when to go like go further into it and then you end up with your results so that's what saber stands for i came up with the logo itself mainly because i well i drew it as a tiger first and then i redrew it but behind the logo um i didn't want to use a lion because i feel like lions are kind of overused nowadays yeah. Tigers also, even though it's kind of like a saber tooth tiger, but jaguars and things like that. But more so, I was like, I'm I'm an American. And it sounds weird, but it's like I'm an American. So it was like, all right, there had to be like some big cats who who stayed out here. And one of those <clears throat> one of those cats was a saber tooth cat. They used to be they used to live in like the Midwest and things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's a really big reason why I chose it. Partially because of like America isn't the greatest, obviously, but it's not that bad sometimes. Like we have our ebbs and flows. My computer it's an experiment. Is yeah, give me two seconds. My computer is done. Oh my God. Ugh. Oh, wait, so he comes back. I've got. A really nice summary here for SVBR. Do you have his logo? Not on me. Let me see if it's any of these. All right. 
So yeah. Yeah, that's where it really came from. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for you. Would you mind if I did my own breakdown of what I just heard? Sure. So for self. The way I've perceived this and the way it's helping me grow is, and this is a culmination of the entire conversation we've had. Right. Being selfish can be a positive thing and should be a positive thing. If you're doing it for you, you are going to grow. Yes. If you do it for others, they're going to grow. Yes. So in order for us to better serve others, we have to grow into our best self. And we do that by filling our cup first. Mm -hmm. uh, for virtue, if you're one big thing I ask a lot of people is what do you regret about that experience? What do you regret about, you know, your, your last week? What do you regret that you've done today? Right. Because whenever you're carrying regrets, that shit weighs you down. It keeps yeah, you it back because instead of fighting forward, you're fighting internally. You're beating yourself up. So I think it's incredible you've incorporated that into your your coat of arms, so to speak. Yeah. Balance, you know, I, I think you did a phenomenal job and that word definitely fulfills its own purpose. But then as far as results, something Tim and I have talked about a lot recently is just do the damn thing. Yeah. If you do it, you're going to be proud and you're going to have learned. If you don't do it's like missing 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, exactly. Batters got to swing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's that's just how it is. Like take Post Malone or Taylor Swift or any any famous like musician. Obviously, every single song of theirs isn't like a no, a chart topping hit. But if they don't have those, like, if you don't have those days where you're like, how am I trying to put it? If you don't have either those days or those songs that you know aren't going to be those, then you're never going to push through to where you do have that hit, right? Because most people's first song isn't like a smash hit, but hey, if you really want to do this thing, then you're going to keep working at it. Like, if you truly want to have a number one billboard hit post Malone, then you're going to keep coming back to the studio. You're going to keep making songs. You're going to keep trying. And we're going to we're gonna make videos. We're going to push it out to the radios. Like, we're, if you want to do this, we're going to do it. So that's the thing, too. Like, you can't – you have to put yourself out there. You have to do the work. And – Sometimes your results may not always be like how you envision them being, but you'd rather be on the other side of like working five years to be a musician and be like, well, you know what? I, I put aside the five years. I met a bunch of great people. I played a lot of great sets. Like I did a lot of awesome things as opposed to being five years from where you were not doing anything. And now your life is on a whole different path. And you may not even be able to pursue music anymore. So, yeah, definitely, definitely doing the work is, it sounds so easy, but sometimes it's, it's obviously not. No. <laughs> doing the work is hard, but taking that advice in is easy. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's like whenever I tell people about guitar, I'm like, guitar is one of the easiest instruments to pick up and learn. Guitar is one of the hardest instruments to master. <laughs> yeah. It. You can pick it up, you can learn four chords, and you can play some songs. That's not too hard. But if you want to start doing some other crazier stuff on it and writing your own music, man, good luck. Yeah. How does how does the the saber? How do you express that in your art? Like the self virtue balance results. Like does that play a part in the message you're trying to, I guess, convey with the art that you make? Yeah, so when it comes to as far as like self, I try to take pictures or I try to make things that that relate to me or that I may be going through. Because I, either someone told me or I just found out through making art 
that almost like the more personal I make it, the more it actually like resonates with other people. So I really try to, that's why sometimes with my art, you won't see me drawing stuff that's just kind of there. Now it's not saying that I'm not having fun or that everything has to be so like deep or have so much weight to it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm not trying to draw like, Vegeta or like Piccolo or any of those things and it's nothing against anybody who does like to do those things but they're just not necessarily like a reflection of like what I'm going through when it comes to virtue it's how I'm like depicting something so if I'm trying to be honest to myself then it's how I'm pulling that across let's see um, a good way to explain. Okay. So the picture that I sent you guys, it's kind of, it's mostly gray. There's like some streaks of yellow in there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, that's a good one to start with off with. So as far as like self, I had felt as though like within the last couple months, I kind of felt as though my life was going in a direction, not necessarily that I didn't want it to go. But somewhere where I'm just like, I'm not happy with this. And I've kind of felt, I don't say lost, but I'm just kind of like in this fog. And honestly, I've, I know that I've been in this fog because I can be indecisive at times. Like, it can be hard for me to, especially artistically, to just pick one thing to do artistically and just go with that. So, and that and a bunch of other personal stuff. So I feel like I'm in this fog. But... People will tell me like that they that they see so much in me or like they can see like where I'm going and things like all that. And they see this person that I can be and that it's just this amazing person. So that those streaks of like yellow or color that you guys are seeing in there are supposed to represent like the Aurora Borealis or like Northern Lights. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. Right. So the balance in there would kind of visually come across as like the brightness of the lights, but like the dull, the dullness, the dullness, Jesus, of like trying to see it through a fog, right? So that's the whole behind this, this that picture I sent you guys. It's in a long, long story short, it's me trying to see for myself what other people see and work mm -hmm. towards that but I feel like I'm in a fog. And so it's like, all right, I'm kind of, I can see it, but I'm kind of also just like drifting in other directions. So that's a good way to, to kind of put the acronym into what I made. Yeah. Looking at it, that was kind of the vibe I got with the, like a little bit of like the Aurora Borealis. Yeah. That's kind of the, my initial thoughts. And then as you were talking about how you feel like you've been going through a fog, I guess, and th I think this is why, you know, a lot of the times people interpreting art without understanding what the artist's intent is, you can come to a completely wild, different place. But with you explaining that, to me, it felt more like looking at the, the photo, the art, I feel like the fog, the gray is the fog and the yellow is like your personality trying to like seep through like who you are trying to break through the fog. That was kind of kind of the vibe I got from that after your explanation that too because I honestly within like the last couple of days I haven't known how to explain it for my entire life mm -hmm. but I had the anxiety and almost like fear of being seen right like being like really just being somewhere where someone's like hey Latif's here or like really just being a part of stuff. Sometimes I may, I may be somewhere, I may be doing things with people, but sometimes I'm still in like my own zone or I'm like, I'm just kind of paying attention to what I'm paying attention to and not really, not really being, I guess, where my feet are, you know? Yeah. So that, what you're saying definitely is a, is a product of it too. Cause it's like my personality I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but like, I have a cool personality. I think I'm funny, you know, I'm obviously I'm artistic. Like, 
I know I have certain traits about myself. It's just I don't want to always have to wait to get to know people in order for me to be that person. So that's the thing. It's like, all right, well, obviously I'm here, but I don't want to hide being here anymore. Or I I don't want to feel like I'm just a part of the background anymore. So, yeah, definitely what you're saying, like, as far as my personality and, like, traits and things, I want those to, like, shine through and be more evident. That's a very big part of it, too. Makes sense. And before Aaron here jumps in, I do want to say, I, I, you know, the past hour I've been talking to you, I think you're a wonderful person. So <laughs> I think you're a great person. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I may not know you very well, but I think you're a great person. But, Thanks. Uh... I appreciate it. <laughs> I definitely, when I looked at that image that we were discussing now, mm-hmm. I felt that fear because through the fog, that could be a golden sphinx or you could be in a house that's burning down and that's the golden glow of flames. Yeah. So I think that's a beautiful way of expressing how the fog kind of is what brings us that fear, not knowing what it, what's truly there. But the thing that really shone through for me when I met you and in all my dealings with you is I think a lynx is a perfect encapsulation because you are pretty quiet, pretty reserved, but you're very kind Mm -hmm. and you're not fake. So many people are just saying what they think someone wants to hear or saying whatever's cool to say at that time. But for you, it always seemed like you were making real observations and having true thoughts. (sighs) Man, first of all, I appreciate it. Sometimes, yeah, it would be it would be hard to to be around certain people or do certain things and not think what I'm thinking. You know, like kind of like what I was saying with the whole positive vibes thing. It's like obviously, yes, I understand what you guys are getting at. You don't want anyone to come around with like some weirdo creep energy or just like who's depressed or they can't talk themselves. Like, you don't want that around. But at the same time, I don't want to walk around faking it till I make it. Or, like, I don't want to walk around, like, trying to, like... I guess this is a big reason why I got out of the food industry is because I got tired of walking up to people's tables and, like, smiling at them. And it's not saying that I didn't want to smile at them, but it's like, I don't really want to be here. I don't want to do this. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to force my brain to like do this for the financial outcome, which obviously is important. But if I'm sitting here taking someone's order, I could sit here with like the best smile, things like that. But when I turn around, it just drops. And I'm like, I don't really fucking care. So that just... After a while, I just couldn't do that anymore, you know, like, and sometimes it would lead to some of those, like what I was saying about like being in my own space or just kind of like, I don't say meshing into the background, but it's like, I don't want to, I'd rather be over here looking at this tree or like kind of entertained by the squirrels than being a part of a conversation that I don't really care about. It seems like you guys are not you guys, but if I'm in a conversation like four people, that I don't really care about. It seems like people are just saying stuff that everyone is just kind of like supposed to say or is that makes sense to say. And a lot of times in those conversations, I would find that I had nothing to say. And it's not that I didn't want to contribute to the conversation, but I don't, I didn't want to just be talking just to hear myself talk. So it's like, all right, if I don't have anything to really contribute, I'm not just going to stand here. And I don't like the feeling of, you know, putting on some kind of mask to make everyone feel like, I guess I'm on the same page or something like, but to the point, yeah, I don't, I can't, I just can't be around the, the facade anymore sometimes, even when it's, even when sometimes it's good. You know, I just don't like the the unrealistic of how some things can go. It's really interesting that you're mentioning this because the 
the concept of being let's just use the let's 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 phrase it like this right in a situation like that where you're working in the food industry or you're you're talking with people that you know you kind of know you're not super interested in the conversation there's a level of dis in disgenuine disingenuous yeah, yeah dis disingenuous ness disingenuousness you have to be disingenuine in order to actively participate in the conversation and it's fascinating because our social setting right if you were mm -hmm. if you were in a conversation with like three or four people or anybody really if you're in a conversation in general and the conversation isn't a engaging b mentally stimulating or c all of the above you know whatever the situation may be you're considered rude because you don't want to be partaking in that conversation so people expect you to have that mask on and kind of fake it till you make it through the conversation which i find very interesting because the amount of like like you always hear people talking about how their social battery battery is drained i find that the social battery gets drained when you have to engage in conversations that are not where you can't be your genuine self like you have to wear that mask the more you wear that mask the more exhausted you get think of it as like yeah. five nights at freddy's every time you close that door and the battery starts going down that's mm -hmm. exactly what it's like I feel like it should be the norm to be able to be like, hey, not to be rude, guys, or anything, but, you know, I'm just going to walk away from this conversation and save my social battery for a different time. But Man, like, I think what's so interesting, not to cut you off, I think it's so interesting about social back batteries, because I was talking about it with a friend like a month ago. Everyone, I won't say everyone, but a lot of people nowadays want to cling to the identity of being either like weird or being like an introvert. And a lot of that shit is a lie. Mm -hmm. Most people, when it comes to social batteries, why I brought this up, when people say like, oh, I'm an introvert. No, you're not. You just need to be in a situation that you favor. Because think about it. Like if you, if you love roller coasters, but you're a quote unquote introvert, but you love roller coasters and you go to Six Flags, and if you're having a good time at Six Flags, you're not going to be in such a rush to go home or to leave. You're going to be, you're going to feel great about being there. You're going to be active. You're going to be socially active. You're going to be talking louder. You're going to be laughing louder. You're going to be more enjoyable to be around because it's something that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that <clears throat> people aren't introverted, but the thing about like true introverts, some introverts, they might go to work they'll go to the grocery store. They might mm, stop at Taco Bell, a uh, fast food place we didn't talk about earlier, but they might stop at Taco Bell or something. And then they're going home for the rest of the day. Yep. Like if we're talking about like introverts. So I think when a lot of people nowadays say like, oh, I'm introverted or I'm really a homebody. It's like, no, you just have to find something outside that you like to do. Mm -hmm. You know, or you have to find a social setting that you like to be in. Other than that, it's just people. I think it's just our interactions with each other. I feel like we don't interact with each other in real life as much as we do like online. And we take in so much information from the Internet, like what what people are wearing, like how much money should certain people have. Mm -hmm. what's the trend right what's now? the trend like who don't go out here looking for any kind of love because women are like this 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 is this, this with the whole the dating shit. thing oh my god dating shit or yeah or like girl if he's not a certain kind of way or if he's not trying to do certain stuff for you he's like an incel like leave him alone it's like so we have all this information mm -hmm. and then we go outside and sometimes we don't even know how to say hey to people or have a conversation because we don't know what section or like what part of the information that we've intaken to use with people. So that's why we'll just be like, oh, fuck this. I'm going home. I'm so socially drained. No, you're not. Like, you just don't know what to do with all this shit in your brain. You're and overloaded. Because it's, yeah, a lot of us are just overloaded. So, yeah, we don't know what to do with all this shit in our brain. And when it doesn't work out a couple of times, we're just like, ugh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to just focus on me at the house. And I'm just weird. I'm an introvert. Like, I don't know. Like, no, it's while COVID 
had a big part to do with it and like how quickly we immersed into like our phones and technology because I feel like before 2012 we still had space from like our computers and like our technology and things mm -hmm. like that but after 2012 we that was like that's when social media really blew up streaming smartphones like after that then we all really became just attached to our phones so with that being said i do think that yes we do have social batteries and it should be okay to be like hey guys this conversation is kind of fucking dumb like I'm, I'm out we should be able to do that but seeing how we've been kind of programmed then we tend to just kind of stick things out whether we think it's good for us or not something that i realized I was getting aggravated with someone who was making noise in my vicinity not too long ago. And as I sat with that frustration, I realized I'm upset because none of these noises are additive. Nobody is gaining anything from the sounds coming out of your fucking face. <laughs> exactly. And so one thing that whenever a conversation's happening near me and then they look at me, very often I say, I've got nothing to add to this conversation. And luckily something I'm developing is the ability to set my boundary of this conversation isn't adding anything to my life. So I'm going to go ahead and remove myself from this conversation. Mm -hmm. And something that blew me away here recently, recently I had been on several planes and that has me reflecting on the flights I've taken in the past. And before, you always sat down next to somebody and engaged them in conversation. On my trips to Italy to see Tim and Ketria, and on my recent trips to Tennessee for a spiritual retreat, nobody spoke to anybody. At one point, the dude sitting next to me, the middle seat ended up being empty and they sealed the doors. And he looked at me and was like, I'll fucking take it and gave me like a fist bump. I was shook. I was shocked. I was like, Whoa, what? Who? What? Who? What are you? And that is fucking bonkers. We are made to connect with each other, to learn from each other, to add to each other's lives. And social media has taken that from us. Mm. It's so crazy. Um, I know while you and I were talking, I definitely wanted to share this thought with Tim. While me and Aaron were texting about like me coming on the show, one thing that he asked me was about like uh, my social media presence. And I'm like, dude, like I'm just tired of social media. It's very sexualized. It's too time consuming. Um, a lot of those things. But um, I kind of forgot where I was going. Regardless, the point was one thing that I definitely wanted to point out was I had the same thought a couple weeks ago when I was on the train to work and I it randomly I was counting. I was like, how many people are just on their phone? Like just how many people was like, all right, there's like seven people on their phone out of like eh, 15, 17 people. And I kind of thought, I was like, man, when do, when are we going to stop talking to each other? Almost like indefinitely. I don't know if it's going to be indefinitely, obviously like humans are going to talk, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like, us like we used to have to deal with either each other like we talk to each other on like the subway or like even if someone's in a newspaper there was more room to be like hey what are you reading about in the newspaper as yeah. opposed to being like hey what's that on your phone because now you look like a creep <laughs> looking over someone's shoulder yeah but yeah the more technology that we did i i feel like the more technology we have the less like interactions that we're going to have with each other yeah and this this might be like this might be a hot take but i feel like i feel like just the way we communicate with each other technology is is changing it right it's not yes. that we interact less it's just we interact in a different format and not to not to like go against what you guys are saying but i think the the psychology there it would be interesting to look at because how is that affecting so if the only way i communicate with people is through like uh reddit or facebook or something how is that affecting how I'm going to be able to act with people in person, you know? And 
it, it completely shifts, I think, how your brain understands social circumstances. I feel like a lot of people are more worried to talk because you can't edit what you're saying in life, you know? Yeah. I can't, can't go through. That. Exactly, right? Like, I can't, I can't backspace what I'm saying right now and then change it and make it sound better or more intelligent or seem like I have more thought put into it. I think a lot of people, especially the younger generation, that's how they're experiencing conversation is online where everything is yeah. editable, editable, where you can edit like what you're saying. You can control the information that's being put out by yourself. You, in a way, you can choose what you want to look at, but not always necessarily because, you know, there's a lot of shit posting online. Yeah. A lot of people so. posting just like, like my favorite, my favorite thing that I, I've started noticing too, I remember when I would watch videos of like people getting into fights and stuff on, on Facebook and whatnot, not necessarily physical altercations, but just people yelling at each other in like a grocery store or whatever. And I'm starting to, well, I guess I'm not starting to, I've, I've realized it for a little while now, but most of those videos are scripted. Most of those videos are faked, you know, mm -hmm. like people are like, oh my God, I can't believe she said that to him or something like that. And it's just, it's like, okay. Like that's not that's not real. That's not genuinely happening. But then people will watch that, and I read through the comments on those, and I'll see how gullible the people are. They're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe she did that to him," or whatever. There yeah. was a it was a post earlier talking about like like two parents who were getting into an argument because they're going through a divorce about their kid or something, right? And people on the comments were going crazy about it. Like, man, this woman is terrible. Keeping this woman, this man from her kid. It's a photo, guys. Like anybody could have fucking put yeah. that text on the on the fucking screen and posted it up for clout just so people will talk about it. Like that's all it is. And so yeah, social media, the internet, things of that nature, it's really shifted how we communicate and what our expectations are in that communication. And yeah, people are becoming more antisocial in in like actual real life settings because of that. And, yeah, I oh not to cut you off. I remember no, you, when you started talking. The point I wanted to bring up when Aaron was talking about social media was that social media, at least to me, it wasn't made with <clears throat> minding our business and like in the goal plan. Like, oh, no, no. Nope. It's usually if you're on social media, you're looking at other people's shit. So you're mm -hmm. you're so concerned about what everyone else is doing. Yes. So yes, what you're saying to your point, we don't have to really deal with the in real life consequences with of what we say based on like social media so someone could be like it could be on like a lizzo post or someone who's a little bigger and they could be really mean obviously there are guidelines and things like that but they be like oh my god you're fat bitch like can just go say whatever they say and it's like oh it doesn't really matter because you can come back in like five minutes and delete it or yeah. if you want, you can just delete this profile, make a whole new profile, and then go back out doing the same things as yep. opposed to being somewhere like in a park, right? And walk you're most people who are doing that, like you're not gonna walk up to someone in a park who's like exercising or something, and be like, oh, you fat bitch. Because like we we're just not doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what that's this kind of like, I won't say an ego, but there's like a mindset behind social media. It's like, well, I can say this about you and I don't really have to worry about any kind of repercussions because shit, you're in, you're in Dallas, Texas. I'm in Kansas city. What Nothing's going to happen. What exactly. are you, what are you really going to do? As opposed to being like actual face to face, you're in MacArthur Park. I'm in MacArthur Park. We're on. We're in the fucking like. We're in the paint of like a basketball like court. And I said something to your face that you don't like. Then it's like, okay, what are you gonna do with that situation? Like, yeah. is this guy gonna possibly punch you, or do you have to run? Like, what do you? Mm -hmm. And those kind of things make you understand like whether you got punched or you ran or whatever the case. You're like. <sighs> All right, maybe I can't talk this way to people on the basketball court, right? Yeah. But again, when I'm in Kansas and you're in Dallas, I can talk to you however I want because nothing's really going to happen. Yeah, the anonymity um, that the internet provides. Sorry to cut you off there. The anonymity no, the internet 
provides is it's people you see it right people will mention things like keyboard warriors and people hiding behind their screens but that really mm -hmm. is pretty much what's going on you know like it, your your uh, hypothetical earlier about approaching a woman or somebody at the at, at a park and and calling them a, a name or you know calling them fat or whatever like if you do that in person you have to deal with the consequences of those actions that person whatever immediately. emotion immediately right like the the emotional response that that person's going to have or whatever like truth be told you know i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure about necessarily like a physical like a punch or some shit but yeah. you you literally might make that person cry like right there on the spot now you have to deal with that emotion that negativity that you brought out there in the world and i feel like most people don't like making people cry like if you go up to somebody and you make them cry like your reaction is probably going to be like oh man I, I feel really bad about that like but on the internet you say that shit to somebody under a, a photo or whatever mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with the the emotional response right it's just a it's it's a it's a nebulous thing that you just did right like you just sent a comment out there in the world you don't have to deal with the reaction you know all of these things that social media provides the anonymity the bulletproof vest in a, in a sense it, yeah. it really is it really is unfortunate so latif a lot of your art is derived from candid photographs and that's one of okay. your passions so i really want to hear more about what makes a moment worth capturing and commenting on to you or is every moment worth effort and we just have to find the purpose in that moment i think there that's a good question. I think that there are, especially when it comes to like being a candid photographer, that really kind of like, that helps a lot in like capturing certain moments. Cause like, I was kind of like what I was saying earlier about like not liking certain conversations or whatever. I don't, now I'll do like a studio shoot, but at the same time, I like to see people having just like natural smiles, right? So sometimes it, it'll it be like a whole moment. You know, it, we could be at an, at an event before I even start taking pictures and it's like, wow, this is actually a lot of fun. Like there's a lot of music. People are out here like really enjoying themselves. You know, there's food, there's drinks. Like even if I don't take pictures, this is a lot of fun. But when you get into it and it's like, all right, cool, here I am taking pictures, then some moments like you really have to it is kind of capturing it's kind of capturing a moment that explains a time almost right like if you saw if you see like a candid picture of spike lee at the at madison square garden just kind of doing a spike lee-esque pose towards the court then you're gonna be like oh that's probably about basketball like, this is probably something dealing with the Knicks because that's all he goes. He only goes to, like, Knicks games. But you kind of get it from this one from this one moment that might have lasted, like, two seconds. But at the same time, you're enjoying the entire basketball game. So I think, honestly, it is both, like, <clears throat> to enjoy just, like, what you're doing. And if you're enjoying what you're doing – for me personally, I know I'm going to take better pictures. This is a well thought out response. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, Latif, where can people find you? I know that you're reducing social question. media presence frequently. Um, right now, I am. I'm actually on Cara, C A R A. It's this app for artists. I'm under there as Sabretooth Links. I need to honestly bring my Instagram back. I don't want to, but I probably just do because it's easiest. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll unlock that probably today or tomorrow. There's Instagram. I am selling stuff on like Etsy. Yeah, long story short, kind of tired of doing like, I'm tired of paying for art galleries or like being in an art gallery and I'm not selling anything. So I'm like, all right, let me just sell this stuff on Etsy because can I get the link to your Etsy shop? Is it Save yes. Tooth on Etsy as well? It is right. Sabretooth's yard sale, like Y A R T. So it's an art sale, but it makes with the idea of like a yard sale. Tooth's yard sale. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll we'll drop the links down in the the show notes descriptions below oh, but cool. i want to look up your yeah so there's your... those things other than that email <laughs> do you do email or do you do any kind of like commission art or anything like that or is all your art mostly like it, it's your expressionism and then if people are interested in that they can purchase it yeah now it's not saying that i won't make something for somebody mm -hmm. it's just i haven't done commissions in a while yeah so it would really depend on what you're asking for but i'm open to it okay. we can definitely discuss yeah incredible lastly before before we dive off here and get into our outro and everything do you have like a like a link tree put together or anything that we could provide to people so that they could just I find do. all of your stuff in in one place I actually do. That's a good point. Heck yeah. Um, well, we're going to make sure that that description or that link is also in the description below. So individuals will be able to track you, find you. Well, that okay. sounds weird when I say it like that. But if people, can <laughs> take, people can look at your art. People will be able to look at your art and get a feel for who you are as a person. Because the art that I've seen so far, it's beautiful. I like it Thank a you. lot. That... I don't know what it is about that that photo with the the woman in the palm trees in the back, but it really like it really stuck out to me. Like, yeah, man, it's it struck a, a chord with me. Yeah, but your other that's... artwork, it's it's incredible. It's beautiful. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was a big thing. I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to have fun again. Honestly, I got tired of trying to turn a hobby into a hustle, and kind of burnt myself out. Mm. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm just trying to have genuine fun like i like this so i'm gonna do it so that's where i'm at it's a phenomenal yeah. perspective yeah well latif thank you so much for spending time with us this has been a very captivating conversation thank you guys for having me we can't wait to have you back yeah, yeah. i would love to do a part two <laughs> yeah definitely we got it we got more stuff to talk about here <laughs> Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and thanks to everybody for listening to the episode. We really appreciate your support. We appreciate you guys checking us out weekly. And yeah, give us some feedback. Let us know via email, social media, comments below, whatever. Let us know what you think of the episode, what you want to hear Aaron and I talk about in the future. Or if you got somebody that you want to see on the show, have them reach out to us. Tell us to reach out to them. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We're more than happy to book people and get them on here and share their stories. If you've gotten some value out of this episode, feel free to head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash no streetlights. Even at the $1 a month tier, you will hear about who we have coming up and you'll be able to pose your questions uh, to really dig into what you want to hear from these amazing guests. Mm. Please Definitely. share our, our page and this episode. Uh, that's the only way we grow. And season four is all about growth. So Please talk with somebody about something that has come up in your heart or in your mind based on this episode. Hell yeah. Uh, little disclaimer here. Our episode is for entertainment purposes. I'm sorry. Our podcast is for entertainment purposes and cannot be substituted for professional medical advice. If you need help now, please call 988 and call or text. One more time. If you need help now, please call 911. Or you can call or text 988 for immediate intervention. Be good to yourselves and each other. We love you.